I'm Ben Woodruff, and I'm here with Leah and Megan up in Big Cottonwood Canyon in northern Utah. And we're actually up here looking for bats. Now it's winter time, it's an odd time of year to be looking for bats, but we're gonna see how they cope with this cold and see how they do uh, at surviving. We began our hike up the mountain and we were grateful that the snow is not deep. Utah has had a warm, dry winter, and so there wasn't much snow to have to trek through. Utah is home to many species of bats, and the species we were hoping to find today is the Townsend's Big-Eared Bat. This common species, like all bats in northern Utah, is an insectivore. In the summertime, you can see them in city parks and in the mountains and over rivers, hunting mosquitoes and moths and any, any insect they can find. They'll roost in trees given the chance in the summertime and even in the eaves of houses. But this time of year in the winter, they seek out caves. Now, a lot of people think of caves as, as a good home for a bat, but the reason might not be what most people would expect. Most caves and even most mines have a constant temperature year round. And if you are a species that has to hibernate in the winter, this can be crucial to your survival, not having extremes of high and low temperatures. That's a setting that allows you to lower your body temperature down and hibernate. We started to trek back deep into the cave and we looked all over everywhere we could for bats. And at first we didn't find any, but the constant temperatures of the cave made uh, it possible for other life forms to thrive even in January. We saw mosquitoes and midge flies and a number of species of moths and we noticed that these moths congregated together in, in loose colonies just like the bats. There were many strange shapes, uh, many species of moth that I was unfamiliar with that had never even seen before. Some of them were brightly colored and some of them matched the rock. We even found cave crickets alive and wandering around. We kept looking and searching and, and eventually our perseverance paid off and we started seeing bats. Bats we found were all hanging opposite the entrance of the cave so that they didn't get the cold winds. Look at these beautiful bats. These guys are in the middle of hibernation. It's daytime, it's almost sunset, but they're hibernating. But the funny thing is here in Utah, these bats hibernate when it's below freezing all winter long. But we've had an unusually warm winter this year. And so we've had temperatures well above freezing, even here in the mountains. And so you see some of these have their ears all the way tucked away. And you see these guys right here, they have their ears out, they're listening. So it's important that I'm not too loud and we don't want to disturb them. It's possible that this bat and this bat right here are in deep hibernation and this bat and this bat are not. They're in sub-hibernation, which means they're more aware that we're in here. They can hear me right now. And if I'm too loud or if I were to touch them, which won't do, that could disturb them. As we looked around the cave, we saw more and more bats. Many of them were alone. Some of them were hanging out all by themselves. Some of them were hiding deep in cracks. But by and large, most of the bats were in groups of four, five, or six huddled loosely together as a way to keep warm. I came to this cave a few months ago, and when I came here, I checked the temperatures of all the bats to see if they were in deep hibernation. This year has been unseasonably warm. It's been in the 50s, and uh, so we want to see what temperature these bats are at. To do that, I'm going to use a thermal imaging camera. And this, instead of seeing visual spectrum light, we're actually going to be able to see the heat signature of the bats and of the cave and see if in fact they are still in deep hibernation. The thermal imaging camera allowed us to see the body temperature of the bats and I was shocked to see that they were all about 10 degrees warmer than they had been about a month earlier. So all of the bats were in sub hibernation. As we went throughout the cave, we only found towns and big eared bats, and all of them were in sub hibernation, not deep hibernation. This has been a really amazing trip to this cave. It's January, it's mid January, and I came up here about a month ago. All of these bats, their body temperature was just basically two or three degrees above freezing. 
Hibernation is costly, but it's a way to survive. Bringing your body down just barely above freezing keeps you from dying. But if there's food available, it's way better to come out of hibernation. So what we've seen here in Utah, northern Utah, the temperatures have been 40, 50 degrees up here in the mountains. And so these bats, they're at sub-hibernation. Instead of 36, 37 degrees, they're at 42 to 48 degrees. So they're in pre-coming out of hibernation. But right now, their bodies are responding to this warmth, their ears are coming out, they're testing the temperature to see, and many of these bats have moved closer to the entrance of the cave uh, in anticipation of spring, than they, further than they were a few, about a month ago. So it's amazing to see bats in pre-hibernation in January when they should be in full hibernation. They should be right, just barely above freezing. This trip was a lot of fun. I always enjoy seeing bats up close in the wild. If you enjoyed this video and would like to learn more about nature and wildlife, please subscribe to my YouTube channel.